Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I thought I would tell you about some of my favourite characters from Victorian novels. So this was a video that was suggested by one of you when I was doing my Victober announcement video and I thought it would be fun to do. I've managed to limit myself to 15 characters from Victorian literature who I absolutely love and who I thought I would talk about today. It has been quite hard to get it down to 15 and I feel like I'm going to film this video and then I'm going to immediately remember a character who I absolutely adore that I've completely forgotten about. So there we go. I've also tried exceptionally hard to limit myself to one character per book. There is one book, Our Mutual Friend, my favourite novel of all time that I have two characters from in this list because I just couldn't I just couldn't not mention both of them um, but every other book I'm mentioning I've just picked one character who I absolutely love um, so I'm gonna go from 15 to 1 but it's gonna be a fairly loose ranking I love all of these characters a lot and until we get to the top few I don't really have a particular favourite I'm also not gonna give like proper descriptions of every single book that I'm mentioning here because there are quite a lot of books that I'm mentioning. Most of these books actually I did mention in my um, favourite Victorian novels a video that I did earlier in the month which I'll link down below um, but I just want to talk about some of my favourite characters from Victorian literature and what I like about them so let's get straight into that. The first character I want to mention at vaguely number 15 is Sidney Kirkwood from The Netherworld. The Netherworld is a wonderful novel by George Gissing that I absolutely love and I find Sidney a fascinating character. I think he's really psychologically complex and he has a really like powerful journey over the course of the book and um, where you see him kind of torn between duty and feeling. Sidney is a character who is very much trapped by his class, he had certain ambitions earlier on in his life that he has never managed to succeed with um, and we see him kind of struggling in his position feeling that he hasn't had the life that he wanted so just think he's a fantastic character. The next character I want to mention is Olive from Olive by Diana Muller Craig. Olive is a wonderful heroine um, and I love her character development and how she grows over the course of the novel and how she like learns to demand more for herself. It's one of my favourite things about Olive as a book is how Olive goes from being someone who feels that she doesn't deserve happiness, who feels that she is not going to have happiness and feels that certain things in life that she might have wanted are off limits to her and I love how she comes to feel that she deserves happiness as much as everyone else around her um, and I just think she's a truly wonderful character and a really interesting psychologically complex character study. And number 13 I have Rhoda Nunn from The Odd Women. I love The Odd Women by George Gissing. It is a wonderful novel and I love the character of Rhoda Nunn. I love her because she's truly fascinating and incredibly feminist. Um, the Odd Women is a very feminist or proto-feminist novel and um, it's truly fantastic. Rhoda Nunn, one of the main characters, runs a typewriting school for women where she's trying to educate women so that they can have better career prospects for themselves. Um, and I love how Rhoda is kind of torn between her ideals and her feelings at times and also I love how she is so complicated and psychologically complex a character. She could so easily have been a stock figure, she could so easily have been a channel for the manifesto that Gissing is trying to get across, but actually she's incredibly psychologically complex. Um, yes, she's very pro-feminist, but that has her limits and sometimes she's very judgmental of other women who aren't following the same path in life as her. She's a truly fascinating character and a really, really interesting one to read about. And number 12, I have Jane Eyre from Jane Eyre. I love Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte a lot. It is a wonderful novel and I love Jane Eyre as a character massively. Jane Eyre is one of the first Victorian novels that I read and Jane Eyre is one of the first Victorian characters that I really fell in love with and I just came to so admire and so like appreciate um, and I feel like as well Jane Eyre is a really good novel for teenagers. I think I've said this before because I feel like Jane Eyre is 18, 19 throughout a lot of the novels and I feel like a lot of the kind of self-confidence issues that she is going through and kind of coming to terms with herself as a person and trying to understand herself as a person and like learning to have respect for herself. I feel like is something that a lot of teenagers um, could do with reading about and will sympathise with. Um, I love Jane Eyre as a character because she is really strong um, even when like her circumstances are bad, even when she's lonely and isolated on her own she always stays really really strong. You know Jane Eyre's social position in the Victorian world because of her gender and because of her poverty um, is low but she always claims the right to respect from those around her and I love that about Jane Eyre massively. She is a really wonderful character and I love her journey in Jane Eyre. Number 11 I have Amy Dorrit from Little Dorrit. Amy Dorrit is actually my favourite like Dickensian heroine. Um, like I feel like 
there are many Dickens characters who I love and there are a few more Dickens characters further up this list but I feel like of all of Dickens's central characters who are the main characters in his novels Amy Dorrit is my favourite heroine and actually Arthur Glenham who is the male lead in Little Dorrit is my favourite um, Dickensian hero although I'm not putting him on this list because I'm keeping the slot for Little Dorrit for Amy Dorrit instead. Amy is a wonderful character she is incredibly physically small physically weak and um, physically slight she's often mistaken for a child she's 22 but she looks much younger than her years everyone therefore doesn't take her seriously and doesn't think she is capable of doing very much but actually she has massive emotional strength and although she isn't physically strong in some ways she has massive stamina she has massive abilities to withstand so much stuff and also she is incredibly clever she basically looks after her two elder siblings her father and her uncle and one of her friends a woman called Maggie she basically takes care of everyone around her um, and everyone around her just is just so much less capable than Amy Dorrit uh, but I love her for that. I think she's a wonderful character. I'm rereading Little Dorrit at the moment and I'm just falling in love with Amy as a character all over again. At number 10 I have put Diggory Venn from The Return of the Native. I think Diggory Venn might be the only character on this list from a book that wasn't in my top 25 favourite Victorian novels video that I did earlier um, in the month. So that tells you quite a lot about how much I love Diggory Venn. Diggory Venn is from The Return of the Native which is one of Thomas Hardy's novels. It's not my favourite Thomas Hardy novel. I think it's probably my fourth favourite I'd say after Jude the Obscure, Far From the Mad and Crowd and The Woodlanders um, but I do absolutely love it and I absolutely love the character of Diggory Venn. He is wonderful. So The Return of the Native is like a bit of a love square, maybe a love pentagon and Diggory Venn is like the fifth point on the pentagon. There are like the four main characters and then Diggory Venn is like in love with one of the four main characters and he's a bit on the sidelines but I absolutely love him. He's a fantastic character. He is, I think it's called a Riedel Man, which basically means what he does for a job is like create red dye and use red dye to mark sheep's wool so that um, shepherds know which sheep are theirs. Which basically means his skin is always stained red because he spends so much time working with red dye um, and he is kind of desperately in love with one of the main characters who is desperately in love with another of the main characters and he's like on the sidelines looking on but he's such a like well-meaning, heartfelt, like just beautiful character. He's just a truly wonderful character, one I absolutely adore. At number nine I'm gonna put Mr Thornton from North and South. North and South is my second favourite novel of all time. I probably could have put like nearly every single character from North and South onto this list um, but Mr Thornton has to be my favourite character in North and South. He's so complex and interesting and um, he's so fascinating. His character development is so wonderful and I love the way his character development and Margaret's character development, the other main character in North and South like come together it's just so clever he's really really fascinating and I love seeing um, him and how he changes over the course of the novel and I also love the fact that you do get to see into his head quite a lot although Margaret is the real main character of North and South actually we follow Mr Thornton quite a lot of the time which I really like and I think there are some really powerful moments where we see into his head but we don't see into hers which work wonderfully he's such a fantastic character and just a brilliant one to read about at number eight I have Lily Dale from The Small House at Allington The Small House at Allington was another book I was really tempted to let myself use two characters because Johnny Eames and The Small House at Allington I adore too and I think I just slightly adore Lily Dale more on reflection though Johnny Eames is a wonderful character too. Lily Dale is fascinating. I love her in The Small House at Allington. I think she's such a wonderful character and her character arc and the ending Trollope gives her character is just fantastic. How she kind of wears her heart on her sleeve to a certain extent but she also has like a great inner strength um, and a great like strength of conviction and even though people around her may like challenge her opinions and challenge what she's going to do she's Still, like stays true to herself in a really really wonderful way. And number seven I have Hareton from Wuthering Heights. Now Wuthering Heights is very famous for being a book in which none of the characters are likeable um, but I love Hareton and I do also kind of love Heathcliff in a way where like I would never want to meet him and he's kind of an awful person but he's fascinating to read about but my true favourite character of Wuthering Heights who I like adore and I just think is kind of lovely and like the one the one nice person in the whole terrible mix of Wuthering Heights is Hareton Earnshaw who is a fascinating character who I love and I really like his character development over the course of the novel as well because he sort of 
comes in is born halfway through the book um, and you get to learn more about him um and he kind of has a very traumatic upbringing in some ways um but he kind of comes into his own more at the end of the novel um and i love his relationship with heathcliff um who he views as a father and how complicated that relationship is Pearson is such a wonderful character and i just completely adore him and number six i have bianca from the half sisters bianca is a wonderful character she's everything that a victorian english woman is not supposed to be she is half italian she is illegitimate she is an actress she wears a heart on her sleeve she tells everyone what she thinks she is not afraid to express her opinion she is not demure she is not meek but she is thoroughly awesome there are so many things i love about bianca one of the things i love about her is that she is an actress and she takes her profession incredibly seriously being an actress in the victorian period was not respected at all but bianca um continually defends her profession and her right to have a profession says how you know bored she would be if she didn't have this passion that she loves um, and i love that about her so much as well as loving like everything else about her she's such a wonderful character really really fascinating i highly highly recommend the half sisters and bianca will just always be one of my favorite characters and number five i have the first of the two characters from our mutual friend and that is bradley headstone i'm not saying that i want to meet bradley headstone or hang out with him he's not always the nicest man but i think he is a truly truly fascinating character and i think he might be the most psychologically complex character in dickens he isn't exactly a hero he is a bit of a villain at times maybe a little bit of an anti-hero but he is so complex and interesting i love that we follow him quite a lot and i feel like dickens does this clever thing in our mutual friend where on the one hand we're not supposed to like bradley headstone because of what he does and the way that he acts but on the other hand he's always called bradley and dickens usually like refers to a character by their first name when you're supposed to sympathize with them and you're supposed to be like close to them and in their head and i think you do get properly into bradley's head and you truly understand what he's doing um, and he's just such an interesting character at number four another dickens character i have tommy traddles from david copperfield tommy traddles is one of my favorite characters of all time he is fantastic he is a fairly important character in David Copperfield who is nearly always cut from every single screen adaptation that is ever done and who is incredibly underrated. He is David Copperfield's best friend um, kind of in his school days and then later on in life as well and he is fascinating and he actually has like a really important role to play in the climax of the book. So I have this theory, right? So the first sentence of David Copperfield is whether I shall turn out to be the hero of my own life or whether that station will be held by anybody else, these pages must show. And I would argue very strongly that David Copperfield is not the hero of his own life. The hero of his life is Tommy Traddles. Tommy Traddles is what David Copperfield could be and should be. Tommy Traddles is David Copperfield who does everything right. They have lots of similarities in their kind of early life, but Tommy Traddles makes like the right decisions where David Copperfield makes the wrong ones. Tommy Traddles is like prudent and um, hardworking, where David Copperfield is spontaneous and does the wrong thing. Tommy Traddles is the one who like solves everything in the end and like fixes things in the climax and not David Copperfield. I love Tommy Traddles so much. He is the best. And number three, I have Edith from Dombey and Son. Edith is a wonderful character and one of my favourite characters in Dickens. She's a truly, truly fascinating person with a wonderful, fascinating character arc, a brilliant, complex psychology and so, so many interesting speeches. And in fact, some of the most like proto-feminist speeches in Dickens are through Edith's lips, um, where she criticises um, marriage as an institution in the Victorian period, where she criticises the way that Victorian society treats uh, men and women so differently where Edith criticizes so strongly um the complex messy problematic gender dynamics of the Victorian period she's such a brilliant character I love her so much highly highly recommend Dobby and Son I love it for many reasons and Edith is definitely one of them and number two I have my favorite character in all of Charles Dickens and that is Jenny Wren from Our Mutual Friend I could not mention both her and Bradley Headstone Jenny Wren is the best she is just just the best she's about 13 or 14 years old she also suffers from a disability which means she struggles to walk without a cane she has been independent from a very young age her father is an alcoholic who has never looked after her so she has looked after him for many years and always refers to him not as her father but as her child she is a dolls dressmaker she makes dresses for dolls she has done this for a really long time she runs her own business successfully she is like strong and independent and cool and she's just the best she has some like truly wonderful moments in our mutual friend um i love her friendship and her relationship with lizzie one of the central characters and i also love um her relationship with mr and 
fascination fledge me there's a brilliant chapter called something like a sprinkle of pepper which is just absolutely hilarious um, and I love Jenny is the best um, but she's such such a wonderful character so fantastic so fascinating so strong and smart and clever and independent um, I love her so much she is yes she's just the best but the actual best the character at the top of my list, my favourite character in all of Victorian literature and probably in any literature ever, is Squire Harley from Wives and Daughters. There are a lot of characters I love from Elizabeth Gaskell. Gaskell is a wonderful writer and her characters are incredibly psychologically complex. But Squire Harley in Wives and Daughters is I think the most fully realised, fully believable, just completely real portrayal of a character in any book I've ever come across. He feels so entirely believable, just completely real, like he could walk off the page. He's so brilliantly written his psychology is so complex. He is not a perfect man, he is very flawed. He's prejudiced and old-fashioned and grumpy and cantankerous and um, quick to take offence. He's got a bad temper but he doesn't always listen to his sons. He can be unforgiving but he's also so complex, so brilliantly, wonderfully explored um, and so loving and caring at times even though he struggles to express it. He's just such a brilliant wonderful character and I love him and his character arc in Wives and Daughters and I just think he's fantastic and so so well drawn what a truly brilliant character and that is all I wanted to say for today those are 15 characters from Victorian literature that I absolutely love let me know down below in the comments what are your favorite characters from Victorian literature and that is it for now thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video